Welcome everybody, my name is Jane 108. Um, this is part two of a two-part series. We just discussed part one, which was all about Unify, about how the number 111, harmonic 111, permeates all of the living mathematics of nature. And this section is going to be on other references that I've collected over the last 40 years of research. Um, so I like to call this Unify because Uni is one and Phi is also the golden ratio. And we have over here what we call a 12-sided shape. This is the Do Decagon. Do is two and Dec is ten. So when we give the edge of the Do Decagon uh, to be one unit, it just works out that the, um, the square area, the square area of this whole structure is 11.1. So 11.1 .1 square units when the edge length is one means we've tapped into that harmonic 111 one, one. because in harmonics 11.1 .1, we can slide the decimal and it becomes 111. One, one. So these are awakening codes and we saw how it permeated the golden ratio. So right now I want to touch on other subjects like magic squares and the multiplication table. So let's look at the magic square of the sun, which is traditionally known as the magic square of six by six. So if we take the numbers one to 36 and just write them in consecutive order, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we go all the way to 36. So this is just a natural counting table of one to 36. And you, if we inspect the two diagonals, which I've written, written in red pen, if we add up that diagonal and that diagonal, the natural sum of the two diagonals each is 111. So there's that triple one code again. Now that's going to appear again in another way. So what I'm going to do is imagine these were playing cards and I said to you, can we reshuffle these cards, these 36 cards, so that now not just the two diagonals, but every vertical column, the, the six vertical columns add up to 111. The six horizontal rows also add up to 111 as well as the diagonals. Now we have as above, so below, what's to the left is to the right. This is perhaps the most profound magic square of all because of the repeating digits of the ones. Ones represent sovereignty, power, leadership, the first, the best, the premier, the presidents. So this has been used by thousands of years by you know, King Solomon and the Sumerian empires. It's guarded secret and royal knowledge. And when we turn the to, um, just to show you that the pairs, the opposite pairs, so if I'm, I'm going to show you all the pairs that add up to 1 plus 36. There's a formula called 37, the alpha and the omega. So this here is the balance of the pairs. So if you look at these three red lines, it means that these two numbers is 37, these two are 37, and these two are 37. So 37, 37, 37 on every single row. So it shows you that with by understanding the first and the last, um, we can find out which is the best of all the magic squares of six because there's literally billions. These are the fingerprints of God. There's billions of billions like different snowflake patterns of how we can arrange this to add up to one, one, one. But this balance of the pairs shows us that this is one of the best patterns. So I use that in my work. When I take your name and your birth date, we form a thing called soul signature. So. This is a six by six square that has encoded your birth name and your birth date. So, and we put beautiful cryptic codes and formulas of creation in the disk around it. So this is something that you can frame. It's called a soul signature and it's all based on the magic square of one, one, one. So that's something that's very unique to me. I'm very proud of all the um, development that I've put based on this one, one, one code. So, and that, the, the first and the last number is 37. If you triple that, so 37 plus 37 plus 37 is 111. So 111 has to do with the, the balance of the pairs. I want to show you another magic square. So that's a, a, um, an interesting six by six, but there's a three by three pattern. If you understood the, the most basic magic square from one to nine, where it all adds up to 15, that's the center of the Tibetan calendar, Sino-Tibetan calendar, um, we can take um, the numbers, not from one to nine, but I could start, say, from 33, and, and 
and if I follow the order of the most simplest magic skill, I go 33, 34, 35, 36, keep going till you get to the last number, 41. Those three columns now add up to 111, the three rows add up to 111, and the diagonal. So the, again, these are unique magic squares that I've made special formulas in my 40 years of research. And a lot of people are interested in prime numbers. So the question is, can we make another magic square of three by three where all the, um, the nine numbers, they all add up to 111, the three columns, the three rows, and the two diagonals. So prime numbers are considered to be what they call the atoms of creation. Another reference to 108 is um, uh, Rena and I went to India a couple of years ago and we stayed at a Jain uh, temple in Tijara. There was a conference, a, I was invited to a mathematical conference and I met a Jain master there. And we stayed two weeks in this temple, we were the only foreigners there. And um, they were the, the Jain religion, the Jain people, they, they wear this kind of, um, I'll just show, the, I'll show you the length of it. They, they wear this um, mala, mala means beads. And traditionally there's 108 beads. And so when they recite the Gayatri mantra or prayers to Lakshmi or Ganesh, they always do it 108 times. But the Jain religion, I noticed, they had the 108 beads, and this bead here is called the guru bead, but they didn't just have the one guru bead here, they actually had three beads. So the Jain religion was secretly adoring the 108 plus the three extra beads, which is 111. And when I asked this girl, Palak, I asked this 19-year-old girl who became our friend, I said, why do you have three extra beads? She said, oh, they relate to things about consciousness, they about right, having precepts. So they related to the right conduct, right knowledge, and also right association. So those three beads were critical on a spiritual level that we, when we say right association, we're talking about even your friends can affect you. So you need to choose who you associate with very carefully. So I just wanted to show you these beads. Um, okay. Another association to 111 is in the Pyramid of Egypt. Um, I do have a little pyramid here. So when, when we look at this pyramid here, we're going to look at the vertical height. So let's just say that what I've written here, that the height in cubits is called 280 cubits. A cubit is the length from here to your elbow. It's more than a foot. So, so this distance from the, the Egyptians had a distance from fingertip to elbow is a cubit. So this height of the Cheops pyramid is 280. But instead of dividing that length of 280 by the, the edge length, we're going, to, we're going to divide it by this diagonal length here. So from the center to the corner is another distance. So when we divide, when we divide this longer distance here, which is 311.126, so 311, that distance in there, divide, so this distance here, divided by the height, gives 1.111 forever. It goes 1.111. So really, when we slide the decimal, it's 111.111. So that's what I mean by it's, um, it's a harmonic 111. So it's good to know that even the pyramid um, is um, demonstrating to us that oneness, the vibrational energy of oneness is in that. And, and that number 1.111 repeater as a fraction, so you understand what it means, it's really 10 divided by nine. So if you got your calculator and went 10 divided by nine, you get 1.1 repeater. Um, and I, I found out that when you multiply this number, 1.111 and you square it, so 1.111 multiplied by itself gives a very fascinating number. Um, it, gives, um, it, it gives all the numbers in order, it goes one point, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it skips the nine, it skips the eight and goes to the nine. So it goes one point two three four five six seven and it skips the eight. It's called the missing eight sequence, but really the eight is in there because another way of writing one point one one squared is it's it's writing it like one point two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen because later on we can actually slide those carryovers to the left and we get the 1.234. So that represents divine order or symmetry of the soul that even though we're in a base 10 system, it's showing us all the um, 
the, the interesting patterns that we don't normally see. So sacred geometry is making visible these invisible patterns. Um, okay, so I want to show you a few more things. Um, talking about cymatics and architecture, there are some incredible buildings, but they're underground. So in the Mediterranean, we have this island of Malta, and I've traveled near there, and I heard about there was an underground um, oracle chamber, and when they the scientists analyzed the frequency that was being emitted from the stones, they found out that the resonance of the hypogeum chamber was 111 hertz, 111 hertz. Hertz means cycles per second, it's a frequency. So these were healing chambers, or maybe they were star portals. So the ancient people thousands of years ago were so tuned in with this harmonic of 111 and also about resonance and healing. It's kind of like a med bed that if you laid in this chamber, every cell of your body would realign to the blueprint of nature of the cosmos. So I'm sorry I don't have a picture of that right now, but if you research the hypogeum, H-Y-P-O, geum, G-E-U-M, it's an incredible structure. Yes, yeah, so um, I have some more information. I wanted to show you um, um, the, the best thing that I've discovered, another thing on another whole topic, it's on the multiplication table. I'll just sh put this chart up to show you. Um, so, you, you all know your multiplication table. So, 2 times 5 is 10, but we take away 9. So, this is called digital compression. So, if you look at this square, some people call it the Vedic square. Um, I like to call it the visual multiplication table. We reduce all two digits to single digits by continued subtraction of 9. I like to call it digital compression, um, digital reduction. There's many words for it. So suddenly we get a new table of single digits. Now, I want to plot all the ones. So over here, you'll see that if I inspected this 9 by 9, which is 81 digits, there's a 1, so I mark it there. There's another 1 and a 1. I notice that there's actually six 1s in this matrix. So the word matrix is an old Latin word. It means the womb. So out of this womb of creation, look, look what's being born when we analyse the six 1s. So... So the children that I work with, um, they plot those six points of one and they end up joining that point to every other point of one. And this is uh, an incredible diagram. I'm really, um, this was in my 20s after high school. I was already like cracking these codes, thinking that I had originally discovered them. But this is ancient knowledge. This is nothing new. But I spent my life turning numbers into patterns. So I call this the art of number, where we take something that we're familiar with apply digital compression, we adjoin all the dots, and so suddenly we've got a shape here. If you, were, you It looks like two pyramids. It looks like one pyramid and another one joined to it, but it's really what's called um, an octahedron. This is one of the, the five platonic solids. And I like to think of this octahedron really as your diamond light body. Um, so this is the field around us, and this is all about the energy of oneness in our field so we can breathe into these geometries around us if i take all the point of ones that's it's, we'll call it like an octahedron going this way but if you look at all the points of eight the same thing happens going the other way so these are all the points of eights so if i superimpose the one on the eights i end up with this diagram so i've superimposed all the ones and all the eights which are mirror image in i superimpose them and we end up with this beautiful mandala which happens to be the atomic structure of platinum crystal. So this was the first photograph of an atom ever taken in the 1950s um, by Professor Erwin Muller. And we end up with the atomic structure of a crystal. So I was really, um, that, that's what led me on my journey, recognising that sacred geometry reveals all these awakening codes of 111. So if you want to learn more about this 111 code and the amazing information connected to it, you can join my free webinar. The link is in this post. Thank you for your time.